in an engine emergency, is it always better to have two? One versus two, we're talking about that in the hangar. I used to be a well-respected member of the aviation community, and then I started flying a Cirrus, and that changed. Oh, that was great. Until the engine quit. And all of a sudden, I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. Two or one? What's better? Well, we're going to find out today in the hangar. We're going to be talking to a couple of pilots. Uh, each one has had an emergency, one in a single engine and one in a twin. And let's, let's dive in to see what's better. So joining us again, Joe Casey. Joe, thank you very much. You are the Malibu guru of, uh, of this area. I've been called that. I've, there's some other people that have that title, too. So oh, really? It, well, I mean, unofficial. Are you the Malibu guru or just no, one? No, I'm, I'm, I'm one of... I've, I've spent a lot of time in the PA-46 world, all the variants, and so that, that term gets thrown around a little bit, but I'm one of the guys. And then Robert Johnson, thanks for coming back you, onto the show. Robert, has, you've got so much experience overall, wide depth of things. So you fly everything from your um, Cetabria mm -hmm. to, uh, to T-28s for air shows. <laughs> Very lucky. But for a long time, in many, many hundreds of hours, you've flown a Cessna 421 twin engine. Yep. Okay, so let's jump right into it. You've had an emergency, an engine emergency, in your 421. Tell me about that story. Well, we were flying back from a college football game, and I had a buddy of mine in my right-hand seat and our two sons in the back. And uh, we're flying along about 21,000 feet and just talking about airplanes. And all of a sudden, my left engine kind of got stupid on me. Uh, went from 31 inches of manifold pressure down to about 15. Uh, that got my attention pretty quickly. Uh, started to descend a little bit, engine ran a little rough. Uh, I went ahead and shut it down and feathered and declared an emergency uh, and landed the airplane. Uh, it was probably a little more to the story than that. It went on a little longer, but uh, it was kind of a little bit of a non-event. I think the biggest issue was making the decision to feather the engine and shut it down. Uh, and once I did that, it was, okay, now I'm gonna go land. Uh, ATC was great. Uh, they uh, said Tupelo Airport, uh, you know, turn right, uh, and it's about 30 miles off your nose. And uh, I looked at my map on Tupelo, it's a 7,000 foot runway. I uh, had crash, fire, and rescue on field, had a tower, and I knew the airport had landed there before, and I said, okay, it looks good. Um, but I was still at 21,000 feet and had to get down, and it took a while to get down there. Landed single engine, uh, fire trucks rolled, and that was kind of, that was kind of it. And then you're drinking coffee in the FBO Pretty in much, 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah, it was. When you had that emergency, when the, when the engine goes from 25 to 15, you're still getting at least a little bit of mm -hmm. thrust. I mean, what went into the decision making that I'm going to shut this thing down and feather it? So a couple things. Uh, number one, in a turbocharged engine, you don't know why you lost turbo. It could be a lot of different reasons. Um, it could be as simple as the turbo decided to say, I don't want to play anymore. Uh, it also could have been a hole in the exhaust system that's spewing 1600 degree uh, gas onto a fuel line and that could end very badly. Uh, in my case, I didn't know it at the time, but what had happened is one of my cylinders had a uh, head separation and it actually knocked, uh, pulled my induction tube out, so that's where all the manifold pressure went and almost knocked a fuel rail off. So I almost had a fuel issue and I didn't, but I didn't know that at the time. Um, Would that have been a fire? Oh yeah, it could have been. Um, so it was, I'm, at the end of the day, I made the right decision shutting the engine down. If I was flying a single, would I have shut the engine down? No, I wouldn't have. I would have kept flying um, because I didn't know what was going on. Um, but the engine also did start to run a little rough on me, uh, which would not have been normal for a, turbo. a simple, a simple yeah. turbo. Uh, and again, what happened was my, I had a cylinder that was, I had a, about a two inch crack in the head of the cylinder and you could actually see the piston in there wow. uh, and, and after the fact. So. Um, yeah, it's kind of went all, that all went through my head making the decision, but uh, it is a lot of an easier decision to make in a twin when you have two engines. I can shut it down and still be able to make the airport, obviously. All right, so that's two engines. Joe, single engine, Malibu, you're at altitude. Tell me your yeah, uh, emergency. Malibu story. Mirage, which is a Lycoming engine, and I, at, I was at 15,000 feet in cruise above an undercast that started at about 10,000. Um, I lost my engine completely. Oil literally was being thrown out of the holes that were shrapnel that was happening in wow. the cowling and oil went all over my windscreen. It was a, a definite engine failure, you know, the, no doubt about it, and there was no, not going to be a restart. Um, I ended up gliding. Uh, to make a very long story short, uh, very, very short, I ended up gliding down over a 4,000-foot runway. 
uh, down through the clouds and at about uh, 1,200 feet popped out of the clouds with a runway right up underneath me. Oh, wow. And was, uh, was able to make a successful landing, uh, engine out. And, uh, with no vision? No vision. It was, uh, you know, it was... Or very little. You know, when people say you get oil on the windscreen and you can see through the oil, I can tell you right now, no. you're not seeing, you're, you, you cannot see through that oil. So it, that's it, another reason to have a twin, because you have the engine <laughs> in there. Now right funny. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it was, uh, fortunately for me, there was on the right-hand side windscreen of the right windscreen, there was about a three or four inch uh, area where no oil was there. I was able to jump over into the right seat, headset flew off and pressed my head up against the side and was able to see enough runway to land. And um, it was a... Uh, you know, one-time shot. You got to make it, and and I did. And it and, and all the training comes to life there, and mm -hmm. you 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 go into this deep reserve of training that you've got to, to be able to do what you need to do to be able to land the airplane. For me, it, it worked out. All right, I only have a few hours in in multi, so I'm not multi-rated yet at this point. When you were going in to land, and you had shut down your left engine, and feathered it. Did you have the option of going around? I don't know. Um, I wouldn't have, put it that way. Would the airplane have gone around? Maybe, uh, but I really didn't want to try that. So one of the decisions I made was uh, I went for an airport that had a really, really long right. runway, a 7,200 foot runway, um, and that was a very conscious decision to find a runway that was long, um, that had a tower, and also had crash fire rescue on the field. Thankfully, we didn't need it. Uh, could I have gone around? I'm glad I didn't have to find out. Right. Yeah. Okay. So for uh, all of us pilots who have started in our single engines and we own a single engine and we, we hear, oh, you know, I'd only go with two engines. It's the only safe way to fly. Um, what, let's start with the single engine guy. Well, obviously, no. There's a, <laughs> there, there, uh, you know, the, one of the things that I... I fly single engines a lot. I fly multi-engines as well. There's advantages to both sides. Um, but there is a statement to be said, put all, in your, all your eggs in one basket and watch that basket. Okay. Meaning a good engine on the front of an airplane is a great thing. And in other words, it's, uh, that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. So, and there, there's some definite efficiencies that come from single engine. Meaning I have two tanks, one in each wing, feeding one engine. So usually the range of a single engine airplane is going to be better, arguably, than a, than a multi-engine airplane of certain types. So there's some, and, and you have the fuselage where you have an engine sitting in front. So you have better efficiency. I don't have these two big things out on the side that are drag, that cause drag. So a single engine airplane is going to be more efficient so in, in most regards. So there's some real reasons that a single engine airplane is a, is a fine airplane. But a single-engine airplane that has either a questionable engine or a bad engine, uh, that's not, you know, you need a good engine and you need to watch that engine. I would think that that argument would go over to twins as well. I mean... Yeah, you need two good engines. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you <laughs> one good and one, one man, that's... Yeah. Um, and I agree with everything Joe said. I fly a lot of singles as well. Uh, and the reason I bought the 421 was really there wasn't a single that could do what I wanted to do. Which is uh, what? which would have been probably maybe a PC-12 would have been there. No, but what, what was your mission that you... Oh, just I need to carry six people and a lot of gear and long ranges and pressurized and uh, fast. And there's just, if you look at... There's not take, a single engine that will do that. Today, no. you, it's changing, though, but, but, but there's the 421 with meets a single, price point. Yeah, with single them. engine turboprops with a PC-12 or maybe a TB. Wait, now, yeah, you're going now way you're, up. Uh, there's, there's more commas than that than I was... Exactly, <laughs> exactly, right. yeah. But, uh, but let me say this as well, that the as time... Today, the hottest thing on the market is a single-engine turbine. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the manufacturers are putting out, you know, their latest and greatest that they're, that they're putting out today are single-engine turbines. Mm -hmm. Cirrus has the new one. TBM's got a great one. M600 is out, is out flying with, that's, you know, all, every, uh, uh, well, yeah, those, those are great. Those are great, but for me, it's a bit, it's got too many commas for me on when you get to that point. True. It, you know, um, well, I guess that's just that's just the issue, you know. Well, in, another benefit we talked about would be engines, but the accessories on a twin as well. You've got a couple. You've got two of everything. You've got two vacuum pumps and a piston. You've got 
two hydraulic pumps, two uh, generators. So you've gotten more. Two engine overhauls. Then that's that. Yeah, 12 <laughs> cylinders, 24 spark plugs, et cetera. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's not just the engines that are uh, your backups. You really have other systems in there as well. And it tends to be, in most cases, more complex, more robust systems than bigger twins. Let's talk about my engine failure, uh, 15,000 feet. Uh, when the engine failed, I had, I had a vacuum system that drove vacuum gyros. So vacuum pumps not turning. I lost pressurization in my airplane. I lost uh, my vacuum instruments, so my autopilot failed. Um, I'm down to just a couple of gauges. And no vi visibility, hardly. Uh, and no visibility, tr true, but the, if I had that been a multi-engine airplane, there would have been a whole host of other accessories on that other engine that's running to be able to help me get where I need to go. All right, so there's no argument that, um, that two is better than one as far as safety is what we're saying. As far as safety and crews, um, I think in this case, my guess, and correct me if you're wrong, but if you had, that's probably one of the few cases where you're at 15,000 feet, you lost an engine, kind of probably said, huh, I wish I had a second one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the first one had thrown oil all over my windshield. Yeah. When you're buying the gas, you want a 421. And when, you're, <laughs> when, you're, when, you're, when you're, I mean, when you're buying the gas, you want a Mirage, and whenever your engine fails, oh, yes. you want a. Yeah, your, your gas goes a lot cheaper than mine. <laughs> right. But, but the issue on a twin is, in most cases, the takeoff. That's when the real, the dangerous part is. That's when we all train for it. Um, I do simulator training for it, um, and that's a major issue. On a single, if you lose an engine on takeoff, you don't have an option. You're a glider. You're a glider, um, although lots of singles have had issues with that as well. And a twin, if you lose an engine, you have, for better or worse, more options. Uh, and that has caused a number of twin pilots issues over the years. Uh, but it's Because of the both. balance issue, and you're, now your main thrust is, is way off your center line. and You've got issues. And, yeah. Yeah. Asymmetrical yeah. thrust. Yes. Is asymmetrical, correct? And yes. you mishandle asymmetrical thrust, and it, again, it's gonna, it really boils down to not how many engines do you have on the airplane. It really boils down to who is in the left front seat, mm -hmm. and is that person able to handle that emergency situation. Which, uh, in the little bit of multi-training I had, um, it seemed like everything was, was geared towards how to handle asymmetrical thrust mm -hmm. and on a check ride. Is that pretty much accurate? It's a huge part of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's more complex systems that you have to show uh, capability to handle those complex systems, but it's all about the asymmetrical of thrust that occurs there. You think about it, the Malibu versus the 421 is a great example. They're very, very similar airplanes in many ways. And virtually, yeah. yeah very, very systems very wise, we've got all the pressurized, you know, all, except two engines versus one. So when you're learning to fly those, the difference really is okay, what do you do if one of the two engines fails? Mm. Well, if the Malibu and the, or the Mirage and the 421 are so similar, I guess what you get with the second engine is a little bit more payload, but you're not getting speed. Uh, what's your speed in the uh, 210? It'll be real close same. to each other. Yeah, they're going to operate in the same altitudes. Yeah. Very, very similar. 421 will carry just a little bit more than a Mirage will carry. A lot more. Yeah, yeah, lot, yeah. More. Two more seats and all those baggage areas and all that. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the progression. 500 pounds more payload. Yeah, probably 500 <laughs> pounds more. Yeah. 500 is all. Uh, probably somewhere in that ballpark. I would think there'd be a lot That's more. Right. But I've got to take more gas. Right, and you, so. But the single engine has more range because it's just more efficient. Air depends on the depends on like if you have a Continental yeah. Malibu, it's got fifteen or sixteen hundred nautical miles of range. I don't know of an airplane, piston wise, that'll compare. All right, let it's me. It's a great example of two two tanks, one engine equals great efficiency. Ah, all right. Let me ask you this this question on how would you feel safety? Your own personal preference. You've got to go from Houston to um, Fort Lauderdale and you've got a single or you've got a, would you be willing to take that trip direct um, over in a single, water. over the Gulf of Mexico? Me personally? Yeah, they, they, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Robert, you wouldn't. I wouldn't, but I'm not sure I wouldn't in a twin either. I think I would hug the coast a little bit. Uh, depends, if you're going to Key West or Cancun, it's a little bit different issue. Uh, All right, well, let's talk about you, you're, in, you're in South Florida and you want to go with the island hopping to the Bahamas. Uh, I, I think your original question is Dallas to Miami, for example. Or Houston, it's a, yeah. A, a big, you know, big cut across the Gulf. Um, would I do that in a single? No, I wouldn't. Uh, would I do it in a twin? Yeah, but I would. You would look, still hug. I'd look seriously about hugging the coast, and if it, a lot of times you flight plan that, it adds 20 minutes to your flight. Like, eh, okay. Okay, that's, that. yeah, for the safety, 20 minutes is nothing. Yeah. What about you, Joe? Well, would I, you go direct across? Yeah, well, yes, depending, depending, on, on, what I'm, depending on what I'm flying. 
And I'll give you a good example okay. on this. Uh, a piston engine is an airplane that has probably 200 moving parts all move in different directions and different rotations and uh, any one of those parts fail and you're a glider. Okay. PT6. Right. Tremendous engine. Tremendous reliable reliability. Everything turned in the same direction. Uh, let's say I've, and I've flown across the North Atlantic in single engine airplanes. How do I treat that differently when I'm between Canada and Greenland in a single engine, in a jet prop? Well, I'm reading a magazine and having hardly any worries. <laughs> Every, it, yeah. There's a great PT-6 that's humming up there in the yeah. front. Do that in a continental powered Malibu and you'll have your immersion suit up to the... <laughs> right, ready belt. to go. All, yeah. Yeah, everything's ready to go because anything could happen at that particular time. There's certainly uh, more moving parts in that. So it, so it really depends upon what engine, what... Yeah, is it an that. engine I'm familiar with? Is this thing got 1,600 hours on a 2,000-hour TBO and no one's done a top overhaul in, you know, in the last while? Well, no, yeah, I'm just not, really not a good answer. Is it a PT-6 bolted onto a Meridian? Sure. Let's go now. I'm ready to roll. So okay. you really need to look at the airframe. You really need to look at the engine that's bolted onto the airframe and your and its maintenance and all those kind of different but, things. Uh, but if one PT6 is good, two's better. Sure. <laughs> well, I, mean, if, I mean, if you're flying well, a, you didn't have PT6s on the 421, no. but you have them on the King 90. I mean, let, let's 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 extrapolate this into a bigger thing. Let's say you're flying uh, something with eight engines. You know. A, a, you know, you lose an engine. You, you, the you, dreaded seven-engine B-52. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you got nothing. I mean, you, know, nobody, you lose that one engine, you're a glider. So you need, need to factor that into the equation. So. Okay, last thing I want to hit. Um, you've been throwing out the term PT-6, and I know that that's a turbine, and I know it, it's, it's... Let's talk about, for those who don't understand the difference between a, a, a piston continental and a PT-6. Uh, what's going on? Well, piston engine is exactly that. It's using, uh, in, in my world, it's six pistons all going back inside cylinders that are moving and turning a crankshaft and turning a propeller. Whereas a PT-6 is a turbine engine. It's literally a jet engine that is pushing a power turbine that's pushing a propeller. And isn't it pushing it backwards? I mean, I mean the, the air... Well, the air that you have an you have an NG that's turning, your gas generator is turning one direction, and a power turning turbine turning the other way, but they never connect. Right. There's only air between them, so it's a free turbine. Point being, there's no opposing movements inside the engine yeah, that you, are. You that said are, this earlier with 200 different moving parts. With you think about, you had six cylinders all going in different directions at different times, turning a crank going one direction as opposed to a PT6 or any turbine where it's all moving the same direction. It's all just spinning. All right, so what, what's the maintenance and, or, or a better question is, cost per hour of operation of something that's PT6 driven versus something that's piston driven, are we looking at double the cost, triple? I mean... Depends how you count it. Depends. It, <laughs> yeah. it yeah, greatly no. depends how you, how you run the math and what you... What you oh, okay, well, well, let's do well, it. Let me, let me give you a good example okay. because there's an, an, easy, an easy one because it's down to one engine. If you look at a Malibu Mirage with a Lycoming engine on the right. front, there's a, an airplane called a jet prop conversion that takes that Lycoming engine off and bolts on a PT-6. Okay. I will tell you that the operational costs of those two airplanes are fairly similar to oh, each really? other. Oh, really? Very operational. Operational, The acquisition yeah. costs are the, the, the PT-6, I mean, the, a Mirage could cost $400,000 in the, in the in an equitable year, equitable year model, um, I mean, equitable paint and interior right. and avionics and all that could be $900,000. So to get in that game, it, it costs a lot more to get into the turbine world. Once you're in that world, the operation of it is not terrible. And you got cheaper fuel, slightly. Yeah, the, the biggest issue is the engines. And if you look at, if you go to Continental and say, I want a brand new 520, I have a 520 or 550, it's 75, 80 thousand dollars somewhere right. there. Yeah. If you go to Pratt and Whitney and say, I want a brand new PT6, it's a million dollars. Oh wow! So that's that's where the delta wow. is. Wow! Wow! Okay, yeah. So we're talking ten times. Yeah. Now, if wow. anybody comes to me, like I have customers that come to me all the because I I fly every day literally every day in piston airplanes and I fly all the time in turbine airplanes. I mean, I, today might be one, tomorrow's the, the other one. If I've got the option of sitting behind a PT-6, I'm sitting behind oh, yeah. a PT-6. Yeah. Or I could say a Garrett. I have a King Air B-100 that I fly regularly. It's a turbine engine. 
Great engine, great airplane, no problems whatsoever. But if I got the option of sitting behind a turbine, I'm sitting behind a turbine. From the multi-engine versus single engine discussion, if I'm sitting behind a PT6 or a turbine engine of some sort, the reliability is so high that I'm really, the, the, the thought processes in my mind of an engine failure and those things can occur, it's just not the forefront of my okay, mind. Okay, so, so let me throw one twist to it, because we went from single to, to twin, but now we're really talking about piston to a PT6, tur turbine. So would you take that same trip across, uh, which would you feel more safer in, a twin piston or a single PT6? You want to answer that or me? Uh, I'll answer the question. I'll take a single PT6. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. You give all me a, a 421 versus a Pilatus PC12, for example. Right. I take the PC12 all day it's, long. It's for safety. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. Well, that's very interesting. You bet. All right. Well, guys, thanks for a, a very interesting. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The uh, the experts have it. They have agreed that the uh, it's not about a single or a twin. It's really about well, we got to afford a, a PT6 turbine. Hold on, hold on. Can I say something to cover this up? Yeah. It's, who I, it's about whoever's in the left front seat. Yeah. That's very true. The, great, okay. the greatest safety device on any airplane that exists is the level of professionalism and piloting of that person in the left front seat. If he's flying a twin, or he or she's flying a twin, great. If they're flying a single, great. If you're going to spend money in a safety area, spend it on that person sitting ah. there. All right. Yeah, the reality is engine failures are incredibly rare, and that's, if you look at the stats, I mean, you probably looked at more of this than I have, it's not engine failures that typically cause No, it's, it's um, spin, stall, stupid pilot accidents. Tricks. Yeah, so stupid pilot tricks. Mishandling something through errant flying. So, I mean, I flew, a th so to come here today, I flew a Cessna 310. Great airplane, love it, no problems whatsoever. I'm prepared on that takeoff for a different set of eventualities than I am in sitting in a, a Continental Malibu, or a Lycoming Mirage, or my Cessna 182. All of them have different things, but it's all about that person in the left front seat. Can they handle that emergency? That's good. That's good. Okay, so instead of thinking in terms of single engine versus twin, think about pouring the money into your training and being the best pilot you can be to handle any emergency that comes up in that left seat. Thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe. Please share, and we'll see you next time in the hangar.